Hi there, if you're watching this right now, there may be a good chance that you recently got a new Kindle during the holiday season. In today's video, I want to talk about what the process is like for setting up a brand new Kindle. Now, Amazon actually just updated their setup process a few months ago that includes a new way to set up a brand new Kindle over Bluetooth with your phone, which is actually really cool and was not around when I first got my Kindle. I want to show you that, and I also want to show you some suggestions for how you can set up your Kindle after you're past that initial setup to make using it a more mindful experience. Let's jump into it. Now, a couple things I do want to mention. The first thing is you don't have to have a brand new Kindle to go through the setup process. If you really wanted to, you could completely reset your Kindle in the settings and go through the same exact setup that I'm going through right now. Secondly, I also want to mention that Amazon is always tweaking their setup experience, so things may look a little different depending on when you're watching this video. Now, before showing you that new phone setup process, I do want to go through the manual setup process first so you can see exactly what the Kindle is asking from you that the phone does for you if you choose that way instead. So let's go through the manual setup first. Now the first thing you're going to see when powering on your Kindle is the language selection screen. However, one thing I do want to mention is right below the language options, you have an accessibility button. This accessibility button actually did not work for me. It's supposed to allow for a voice reading of all the options in case you are visually impaired. However, I don't really understand how this is supposed to work because Kindles don't have built-in speakers. You would have to use headphones, and on top of that, there's no headphone jack on a Kindle, so you have to pair your Bluetooth headphones to work with this. So again, the voiceover option is there, but it didn't work for me out the box. It may be something where you have to update your Kindle with the new settings for this to work. Putting that aside, I just chose the English language as my choice of language over here, and the following screen will ask you to choose Choose your region. Now, the way I see it is it'll ask you to region based on the language you chose. Because I chose English, the two options that came up were United States and the UK. However, I do imagine if you choose a different language, you'll get different options here. So just choose the region that you're in and press next. Now, after you get past this little loading screen, the next option you'll have over here is what I was talking about before. You'll have two different options. The first one will say, do you want to set up using the Kindle itself or do you want to set up using your mobile phone? For this this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you setting up on your Kindle itself first because this is the manual way of doing it. It'll actually show you all the behind the scenes of what the Kindle is asking for in case you don't have a phone to use. Now, the first thing it's going to ask for is your Wi Fi. You need Wi Fi on your Kindle to download books, buy new books, and sync across all your other devices. It's very important that you have Wi Fi on your device. Now, when you enter in your Wi Fi credentials, you're going to see a checkbox over here for saving your Wi Fi password to your Amazon account. This is actually a really interesting feature that I find pretty useful, but I want to explain what it does. When you check this box off, it'll actually save your Wi-Fi password on your Amazon account. So in case you buy a new Kindle or any other Amazon account device, it'll automatically connect those devices to the new Wi-Fi you're saving. So for example, if you have an Echo device or something like that, it'll automatically detect your Wi-Fi network if you have one saved to your account. Same thing with the new Kindle. I just bought the new Kindle Paperwhite recently and it already knew my Wi-Fi password because I had it saved from previous uses. It's a very small feature, but honestly, if your Wi-Fi password is hard to remember, this might be very useful for you. The next thing we have after you're on the Wi-Fi is to actually log in with your Amazon account. This is really important because this is where all your books are saved. This is where all, all your purchases will be. If you want to buy a new book, you need an Amazon account to do that. So make sure you log in with your Amazon account, the one that you want to use to buy all your books, and the one that has all your existing books if you've bought them in the past. Now, the next couple things are very optional and they're a little bit annoying in my opinion. It's going to ask you for your phone number first. If you enter your phone number, it'll send you a text message with a link to download the Kindle app on your phone. If you don't have any intention of reading on your phone, you can skip this step completely. I do enjoy having the Kindle app on my phone to look at my reading insights. It'll show you your reading days and how many days a week that you read, things like that. It's very interesting to see, but no means is it required to have. If you want to skip this step, I would recommend doing that. You can always get the Kindle app later at your own time from the App Store. Now, the next screen over here is going to ask you if you want to try a free trial of Kindle Unlimited. Now, this is actually very useful to know. First of all, let me explain what this is. Kindle Unlimited is like a Netflix for reading books. You just have your subscription and you have access to Kindle Unlimited library of books. This does not mean you have every book 
and Kindle's catalog available to you. It just means certain books that are part of this membership program will be available to you for free every single month as long as you're a paying subscriber. I don't have this personally, but for some people, if all the books that you read are part of this catalog, it may be worth paying for this instead of buying every book each month. Do keep in mind though, after you cancel your subscription, you lose access to all these books just like you would a Netflix subscription. Now, one thing I do wanna mention though, is even if you don't have a new Kindle, I got this promotional offer after resetting my existing Kindle. So if you wanna get this free trial and you've never tried Kindle Unlimited before, you can get it on your existing Kindle simply by resetting your device. I got an offer for three months free or a discounted six month offer. It's a pretty good deal if you wanna try it out. Now, after you do that, you're basically done with the initial setup. It's gonna take you to your home screen and that is it. Let me talk about the phone setup first before I talk about this home screen and my suggestions for setting that up. The phone setup is actually a shortcut in this whole setup process. It does it much quicker, but it does require that you have a phone with you with the Kindle app already installed and logged into your Amazon account. Now, when you start the setup process, it's the same thing as before. You still have to choose your language. You still have to choose your region. But once you get past those two screens, the next option here, we're gonna choose the other one for use my phone to set up this Kindle. This is the other option that we did not choose last time. Let's go through the setup now. It's gonna tell you that you need a phone with the Kindle app installed, and it'll tell you where to go in the app. It's actually really cool how this works. You open up the Kindle app, you go to the more section, open the settings up, and there'll be this toggle over here for quick setup on a Kindle. You wanna turn this on. Once you turn this toggle on, it's gonna ask you for Bluetooth permissions on your phone. When you give the Kindle app Bluetooth permissions, it is now able to scan for nearby Kindles next to your phone to see if there's any new Kindle that needs to be set up. For me, it found my Kindle within a few seconds and I got a pop-up asking if I want to set it up using the Kindle app. I just hit the yes button and it brought me to the next screen. The first thing you're going to see is it'll ask you to confirm the Amazon account that you're logged into. Is this the account that you want to use on your Kindle? It most likely will be, so you press the yes button. The next screen will ask you about your Wi-Fi. Now, as I mentioned before, I already have my Wi-Fi saved on my Amazon account. So I just pressed my Wi-Fi. I didn't have to enter any password. It automatically brought that Wi-Fi over to my Kindle. However, if this is your first time doing this, you will have to enter your Wi-Fi password here. Now, after going through that step, you're basically done. It's saving you a couple steps of having to enter in a Wi-Fi password potentially and also having to log into your Amazon account. Typing on a Kindle can be very annoying sometimes, so I really do appreciate that they have this Bluetooth option for your phone. It makes logging in so much easier than using the Kindle itself. Now, you will still get that option over here afterwards for Kindle Unlimited. So no matter which way you set up your Kindle, you'll still have that free trial come up as of right now. Now that we're on our home screen, I wanna give you a few suggestions here how to make this the most mindful experience possible and just have some settings changed to use the Kindle in the best way possible in my personal opinion. The first thing I recommend doing is checking to make sure your Kindle is fully up to date with its software. The way you do that is go to the top right, press the three dots and go to settings. Then once more, once you're in the settings, you'll see three more dots on the top right, press those again, and now you'll see the option for update your Kindle. If this option is grayed out, it means your Kindle is already fully up to date, but if it's not, make sure you press that button so it updates. Now your Kindle will get automatic updates over time, but sometimes it takes some time to get those updates. So you can always check to make sure the latest version is there by going to this section. Next, let me talk about this home screen. By default, when you're on the home screen for the first time, it's gonna bring you to this tab at the bottom that says home. Now, I don't like this tab very much because it does show you the books that you're reading, but it also shows you a bunch of other junk like recommendations and ads for other books that Amazon thinks you may like. I don't like seeing all this stuff. The only thing I wanna see on my Kindle are the books that I've already bought and the books that I'm actually reading. I don't wanna see suggestions for other things or temptations to buy other things. And it's actually really easy to get rid of all this extra fluff. The way you do that is simply by going to the library tab on the bottom right. And once you do that, the Kindle will remember the setting that you're putting on right now. It will not go back to the home tab unless you manually press that button. So even if you're in a book and you go back to your home, 
home screen, it'll go back to the library tab and not the home tab with all those recommendations. As of right now, there's no way to fully turn off that home tab. It's kind of annoying, but I do appreciate that Amazon does not make it a default thing. You can easily make the library your default by going into it and you'll never see that home tab ever again. Now, the first time you're in this library tab, you're gonna see a bunch of different things. Firstly, you're gonna see every single book that you may have purchased through your Amazon account in the past. But not only that, you're gonna see other things like Audible books, anything like that you have bought through Amazon that technically classifies as a book, it'll be in this section. Depending how many books you read, it may be a lot. For me, I actually have things in here from high school that I had to buy way back in the day, and I can swipe through all those books over here. There's a lot of stuff in here that I didn't even know I had. It could be very overwhelming. What we're gonna do now is actually add some filters in different settings. I'm gonna go to the filter section over here, and the first thing I'll do is add a filter for unread books only. I don't I don't want to see books I've already read. I only want to see the books on my Kindle that I haven't read yet or that I'm currently reading. Adding this unread filter will accomplish just that. The next thing I'm going to do is actually add a second filter for books. This will ensure that all the Audible books will be removed from my Kindle screen over here. I use my phone for Audible. I don't need those books on my Kindle. You can have them there and use Bluetooth headphones if you want, but for most people, I imagine they use their phone for listening to Audible books. So adding this books filter will remove all the extra stuff and only keep books on your Kindle. Now next, I even narrow this down even more. Right now, I have a bunch of unread books in this section over here. I only wanna see the books that I'm actually reading right now. The way I do that is I press the three dots on the books that I actually wanna read right now and press the download button. By default, every book you have will always be in the Amazon cloud, but you can choose which books you actually download to read onto your Kindle. So I like to have a few books at a time actually downloaded on my Kindle and keep the rest on the cloud. Once I do do this, I can simply press the downloaded tab on the left side over here, and that will only show me now my downloaded books as well as the filters I added. So it'll only show me my downloaded unread books, which is way more specific than everything I was seeing before. It is a much more mindful experience now. At this point, you can also go through the sort menu and choose the order in which the books are displayed. I like the recent option the best because it'll always show me the most recent book that I'm reading at the very first position over here. But also you can choose by alphabetical order for author or by book title. It's all personal preference. One more thing you can do in this sort menu is choose the way the books are displayed on your library screen over here. I like having it on this default grid section where it shows all the book cover art. Very nice, I like seeing that a lot. However, if you have a lot of books and you prefer having it without the book cover art, you can go to the list section over here. It'll show you all your books in a nice, easy to see list format. It'll even have a bit of a progress bar to show you the percentage of the book that you've actually completed so far. I prefer the book covers though in the grid format because it's much easier to switch between books, much more visual. I like that having bigger buttons to press on my Kindle is always nice to have. I hope you found those suggestions suggestions and tips helpful. If you want to learn more about how to use your Kindle in a fun way, check out my video on 15 hidden features you probably didn't know about on your Kindle. Link for that on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.